Bro, we couldn't have it better. What a setting. Both Gardner and, of course, Greg Murphy were practicing their starts. And let's see how they get off. And Greg Murphy's got off to a good start. Oh, as a he gets a hit too close from behind by uh, Dick, I think. Stephen, it's Dick or John Bow gave him a bit of shunt as Brocky bogged it down the line. Now, it was actually John Bow then that uh, got a very bad start, and uh, unfortunately Peter Brock got a bad start as well, so they're towards the end of the field. So two of the more experienced campaigners off to a bit of a slow start, but it's the flying Kiwi, Greg Murphy, who's got a great start down the back straight for the first time in the number one mobile Holden race. there, Steve. He's always really talking uh, to Murphy. Oh, and a big smash, and it's Phil Crompton in one of the Coca-Cola Commodores and that McDonald's bumper looks like junk food, doesn't it? Sure does. Out over at the hip and we saw something happening in the background there as we're looking at Murph leaving the trip, leaving the corner. I wasn't sure what happened there. I saw Let's right, take a look. You see Murphy in the Iowa replay. He gets away nice and clean, followed by the rest of the Falcons. And then just coming into shot now. She's pretty tight round there. And he gets shunted out by one of the FII shell cars onto the grass, does a bit of lawn mowing, clips oh. Larry oh. Perkins, and then we've got we, two cars out. Just what we didn't need, we've been saying. What a day of carnage it's been at Boogie Coe as Larry pulls the older VP Commodore into pit lane. Lots of damage down the side from that uh, side shunt. Larry was uh, actually a big, big comeback here. Of course, it's quite interesting that these guys... Oh, oh, look at that, wow. He's lost it over Mobile Mountain. Oh, the Coke boys won't be happy about that. They've uh, they've had a terrible race this race with Crompton out and now Gardner. Well, it's obviously got a bit twitchy in a car with attitude, the wrong sort of attitude, and he's just spun it offline. Look at the huge crowd here. They'll be just buzzing. They'll be going off. Unbelievable smack bang in the middle of the track right in front of us. Wayne Gardner, superb cracks for, for the fans, bad for the team though. Let's see what happened. Just coming up right behind there, Radisic. There's quite a big bump right in the middle here, and I think Wayne's, yeah, he's just hit, there's one big bump when you get back on the throttle, and he's uh, basically just lost control and smacked into the wall. It looked like it hit pretty hard on the right front wheel, so I, I, there's no doubt he's got some steering damage. Unbelievable stuff. The poor Coke team, I mean, they came here you know, looking for such a great performance out of these two cars. And poor old Wayne Gardner just whams and slams side on into the Armco. Top of the hill, all that crowd up there getting this action. Wham in their face as the Ford Explorer pace car slows everybody down to a crawl. I think they might have to change Mobile Mountain now to the Big Mac. So it's just down to Greg Murphy on pole for race two. Gets off to a pretty steady start. Look at Brock. Oh, oh yes, yes Brock. The down Murph has bogged it down and Brock, he's gone through following Glenn Seaton. So Murph uh, couldn't quite pull off the two in a row. He did a great job first time out, but now he's got all the work to do. What are his chances? It's, uh, it's going to be extremely tough for him at the moment. These first few laps, they're going to have to settle down. Uh, obviously, they're all going to be going extremely fast. And I think Murph uh, is going to have his work cut out, especially passing his teammate and Glenn Seaton. He'll be pretty annoyed at that because you know, in the practice sessions this morning, he sat there in that spot and practiced his start and he got off the good starts. Look at this though, the dog fight up to towards the hairpin. Peter Brock trying the outside line around Seaton at the hairpin. First time Seaton shows him the outside of the track. Brock, he says, OK, I will give way to you right now. Now we've got this two mobile HRT cars side by side and Merv's going to take it back from Brock. So he shows the uh, the master the way around the S's on the way up to Mobile Mountain. And remember, of course, this is where they almost collided yesterday in practice. And Brocky's down the inside again. That was a good move by Murphy, actually. He saw Brock try to pass Seaton on the outside and uh, basically got hung out to dry. And Murphy just followed Seaton from the inside and passed him. Great pass. Put a bit of paper between all these guys. And uh, Johnny Bear's one of the hardest guys to pass in the touring car scene. So... All the three guys behind him are going to have to work extremely hard. But this is what the crowd have come to see here at Pukekohe. Here we go. There's Brocky trying to get around the outside on the left-hander. So come the right-hander across the mountain. He's going to be on the right line. But what happens? Gets loose out there. Bow gives him no room. This has got yeah, the same sort of buzz as Bathurst. In fact, it probably feels bigger than Bathurst at the moment because for New Zealand te teams and New Zealand fans, we haven't seen the entire field of V8s. It's always been either your father, Dick Johnson, or Peter Brock out here against the uh, BMW. So it really has been a fantastic day so far. Over the top of Mobile Mountain, the number one, HRT Commodore, Greg Murphy. Murph on his home turf, and he makes it back-to-back -back wins.
in the V8 supercar. Second, John Bow. Third, Alan Jones. Then, Dick Johnson. Coming down to the finish line will be Tony Longhurst and Pukekohe. The Mobile Auckland Sprint has been a sensation all day today. We'll update the point situation throughout the race. Let's see if Murphy gets a better start. He does this time. John Bow making a good move too. So is Dick Johnson. Tricky Dicky down the outside. Straight up into second. Oh, sensational stuff by the, the Queenslander. Steve's heart's beating really hard because it's great to see his dance team doing so well at the start of this race. Longhurst or someone actually clipped the tyres and sent them flying. Not sure who that was because there's a big ruck of cars really stuck together there at the back half of the grid. But a great start from Murphy this time. No balking on the start line. No problems whatsoever. Really nailed it and got away clean. No, he actually got the start absolutely perfect. Then he must have got the revs just right, slipped the clutch just that enough and uh, he got away perfect. But uh, I tell you what, the old man didn't do a too bad a job either. <laughs> oh, a sensational start by Tricky Dick. Oi, look at John Bow. He's come back and said, hey, what are you doing? JB hit him, I'm sure of it. He's lost another place too, I think um, one of the other cars snuck in front of him. Yes, it's uh, Russell Lingle, I think, and the Castrol Commodore has snuck up there as well. Yes, and anyone thinks that there's team waters in there, you better think again, haven't you? <laughs> Indeed, that's right. Well, maybe there will be after this meeting. We go on board the 05 car of Peter Brock. Sensational shot, the man behind the wheel. As he hasn't got the race face on today, but I think he'll have it on next week round Wellington. Great shot from the three sport team here at Pukekohe today. Oh, right oh. Is, through the dirt. is that Paul? That is Paul. Great time, of course, but looks like the old bad luck blues continue. Oh, accident there for Alan Jones. Tangles with, is it Larry Perkins? Brocky scored out there as well. So AJ's run, which had him up in fourth spot, that's taken a dive. He, he winds it back onto the track. He'll be running on mad for a bit now, probably. And Jonesy is fairly renowned to fire up quite a bit, so uh, it's going to be some sparks when he comes into the pits well, next time. He had it off in practice, didn't he? Just down by going into the uh, the railway corner, so it'll be interesting to see what actually happened that time as they closed in on the hairpin. In car and you're Peter behind Brock. Peter Brock's. This is the view from Brock. He's, he was forced out wide from Glenn Seaton. And at this stage, oh, someone's had a tap there. I actually think Jonesy's tried to go down the inside of Russell and lock the backs up, like I was saying. You need to be fairly brave, and uh, unfortunately, he hasn't pulled it off. Well, he's already been given a nudge from behind, and now he's clipped Russell Ingle, and there he goes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, Russell Ingle, that's knocked him back down the order, too, to about seventh spot now. That's in all uh, of that push and shove. It's really opened it up for Bear, who's actually closing on Murphy. Longhurst picks up the third spot. He's close the gap on Greg Murphy. There's the difference. And there's third place followed by Dick Johnson. So Tony Longhurst trying to make a late move on the last lap. Greg Murphy down the back straight for the last time, going for three in a row in the hat trick. He'll be just cruising now, Greg. He's got plenty of lead. Uh, once you see the cars that far back, you know you can break that extra 10 or 15 metres earlier and uh, just make it to the finish because there's no points in trying to go for a lap time on the last lap. He knows he's got the right package, the package that has taken Craig Lowndes to victory in the Australian Touring Car Championships this year, the double at Sandown and Bathurst. A great drive by Greg to get behind the wheel after the disappointment of last year, not even getting behind the wheel when the cars broke down. You know, you do have to have the package, but uh, you've really, you've still got to drive it too, and he's done a fantastic job today. So here he comes for the last time over the top of Mobile Mountain. Up goes the fist, down goes the jacket flag. Murphy gets the triple. Great start.